So this is the continuation of the troubleshoot series and today is part two where I show you all problems with a power supply unit which comes from the back and how to easy troubleshoot and repair it at home. Coming up, roll the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Bilmai Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do reviews, repairs, and tutorials of tech, including sharing some entrepreneur tips to help you unleash your true potential. At any point during the video, if you want to pause, there are timestamps below in the description and also show notes of everything I talk about, so feel free to do that. Now let's get back to the main topic of today's video. If you've just stumbled on this video, this is part two of an 11 part series, which I call the Troubleshoot series. So in the first introduction part, I show you the 10 main components or parts of any computer device, like a desktop PC, a laptop, tablet, or even smartphone. And if you can pinpoint which exact part is causing the problem, then you can easily replace it at home. I also show you the computer turning on sequence of any device. So from the moment you turn the power switch on until the time you log on to your desktop, like it could be a Windows, Linux, or Mac uh, environment, then the, all computer devices follow the same pattern. And again, if you can find out which part of that sequence is problematic, you can easily fix that. So you should really go and watch that before this video. And in part one of the series, I talk about issues with the computer case and issues with the front uh, power button. And also there's a cable that connects the power button to the motherboard, which can cause your computer not turning on. Unless you're very tech savvy, you should go watch these videos and come back here because I will be referring to them. Okay, so let's talk about the symptoms of why would you know that is to do with the power supply as opposed to any of the other, you know, nine or 10 components I mentioned. First, obvious symptoms, if you go and switch it on, there's absolutely no activity. So there is no fan spinning, no LED lights, and nothing is moving, completely dead. Most definitely is going to be a power issue. But here's a question. Because the power comes from the back into the power supply, and the front, like I mentioned in the previous video, also is responsible to turning the computer on, which one do you test first? Do you test the power supply or do you test the front panel? Now, the reality is very difficult for me to tell you which one to go with first because it will depend on a few things like one, what do you have to test with? Two, how easily accessible is the front panel or even the power supply? Three, how quickly you can actually do each test? And four, the actual history of the device just before you had the problem. If it's your own device and you know it was working fine the day before, but you know, in the middle of an application, you heard a bang, most likely it's gonna be the power supply. You know, you're gonna to have to test that first. But if it's a new device and you don't know the history and the client or the owner of the computer doesn't tell you or doesn't remember what happened, or if you've transferred components from a different case, it might be difficult to know which one to start with. In the reality, you should actually do both. Now, what I tend to do, uh, usually I know the history, I ask questions and I assess it, but most of the time for me, I have a power supply lying around and it's very easy for me to just unplug the 24 pin mains and also the uh, four or eight pin for the CPU and just plug in a good known working power supply and I can quickly test that first. Now, point here, very important. I say you have to test things with a known working device because many people make the assumption that they, they, they are suspecting power supply is dead, okay? So they buy a new one and it comes package, even if it's a branded name one, and they plug it in uh, to test and nothing happens. So they assume that the power supply was fine, but something else in the computer is dead. And that is a wrong assumption. Everything that is manufactured has a small percentage within a usually acceptable margin of error that is gonna be defective from the production line itself. It happens, so don't make that assumption. True, it shouldn't happen most of the time, but it does happen. It's happened to me a few times. So if you plug something into test, make sure you know it's working for sure. And the only way to do this is if you have tested it just before you take it for test, yeah? Test it and 
test it again in that thing that was working before just to make sure it's working it's also called calibration so after i test for the power supply if it's still not turning on that's when i go to the front bit to check the power button to check the cable etc so you're gonna to need to refer back to that video to see what i mean all right so i did a previous video on the topic it was called i think something like dead pc computer not turning on you see me cuddling a pc uh, you know um it was a dead PC. So we did find out that the problem was the power supply was dead. And I show you how to test that. It has a very unnecessary, cringy intro, according to some. The audio and the lighting isn't great, according to me. And the production value could have been better. That was one of my earlier videos. So if it needs a revamp, please let me know and I will redo that. So today is going to be like a summary of what I showed you. So in that video, what we did first, you're always going to need to do this. You're going to need to find the source of your electrical input and you're going to need to test the cable or even from the mains plug and uh, two ways to do this the easy way is to plug the cable into again a known working device and turning on if it works brilliant you can continue the test if it doesn't work then you're going to know maybe there's a problem with that cable or even from your mains you're going to have to test that at this stage if you have a multimeter it's a great idea to quickly test AC voltage. And in UK, it's about 230 to 240, it varies. And I, I show this uh, in a couple of videos and put a link below. Now, in that video, I also show you um, what do you do if you don't have a multimeter or if you don't have a spare power supply to test with. And in which case, what we did was we did what's called the paperclip test. Essentially, we uh, plug it into the mains. Before that, we bridge the green and the black cable and to try and short it and then we turn the power on so we did find out that my power supply wasn't working because it wouldn't turn on and we tested with a power supply which does work using the paper click method what i did not show in that test and what it did not explain was that this test will only show whether the power supply is turning on or not but if it turns on, it will not test for whether it's delivering the correct voltage. And that is an advanced troubleshoot test that you need to do. And I've done a standalone video where I show you how to use a digital multimeter to test for a power supply because each pin of that 24 pin power supply has a different voltage, usually between 3.3, 5 and 12 volts, both plus and minus. So go watch that video because if this test doesn't uh, give you any result, you're gonna have to do an advanced troubleshoot test. I have asked a few people who've watched it, although it's an advanced troubleshoot uh, tutorial, they said, and they are non-tech savvy, they said it was quite easy to follow and they could understand it. If they were given a multimeter, they would be able to do it, so why not? So um, the other thing as well is you could use what's called a power supply tester, and you can buy those from eBay or Amazon, now, I've never used one of them, so I can't recommend a specific make and model. From what I know from people who have used them, there are a couple of issues. Number one being that uh, most of them that you're going to buy is going to be a very standard uh, power supply tester, which only can test for a 20 or 24 pin power supply connector. As I've told you before, some uh, proprietary designs from brand manufacturers like Acer, uh, HP or Dell, they have weird power supply shapes and non-standard ATX power supplies and those will not fit in those standard testers so it's going to be difficult to do that. The other reason is that um, obviously I, there's no arguing with this, a digital multimeter is so much more versatile, it has so many more functions. The four main ones that I use most of the time is you know continuity, ohms, uh, AC and DC voltage and those help me to you know fix a lot of electrical problems but with a power supply tester you're only going to be able to test standard ATX size power supply so you know there's not much point for me to do that and I wouldn't necessarily advise you to get one of these unless you know that you're going to be testing a lot of standard ATX power supplies then you know feel free to do that also the other thing is I've heard and again I have no experience that they are not always very reliable so you wouldn't know whether the power supply tester is giving you the correct results or not so power supply 
Very important that you use the correct power supply that's delivering the correct voltage. What can happen if you're using a bad power supply? Uh, some issues like obviously it can take out some of your other components, but even worse, and I've heard, I haven't had personal experience with this, that it can set something on fire, even your whole PC and obviously damage to uh, yourself or people around you or even property. So it can be dangerous. Although the rate should be diminishing by now because hopefully most of you guys now will not be using dodgy, cheap and power supplies. So the advice is if you're going to get a power supply to test, get a branded one, get from a reputable seller with very good warranty period and always a good idea to have one of these so you can test them even on purchase to see whether it's functioning properly. Now, what I would advise also is don't make assumptions, right? Even after you've done the test with the power supply and the front panel, uh, you should be savvy and think this is why I'm doing this series for me to teach you that troubleshooting is not straightforward. It's not magic. You have to do a lot of eliminating. And uh, although I'm going in this order, but you might need to go a different order by the time we finish all the troubleshoot series tutorials. So that's it for today's video. In the next video, we're going to be tackling the processor or CPU issues. And uh, please check out the other Troubleshoot series uh, tutorials I've done and the two standalones one. I've also done one where I take out the motherboard to show you how to check for the you know front power cable. And this is called breadboarding. It may be necessary to do that as well. But we are going to be dealing with specific motherboard issues in the next parts of this series. That's the end of today's video. Couple of final notes before the outro. This video was not sponsored. You will find show notes and links to everything I've talked about in the description below and in the cards above. Any affiliate link to sites like Amazon or eBay is clearly identified. And if you click them and follow through with the purchase, it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback. So it's a win-win for everyone. One more thing, if you want to ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this vid and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.